Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Ramp Real Access Motivates Progress, our live podcast every single Wednesday night here on um, Ramp or the Coalition Talk Radio. Tonight we have a great show for you. Today we have Raymond Melanson from the Next Monitoring System, and we are going to be talking home monitoring and equipment that you need. Welcome, Ray, and thank you for the sh- coming on the show. Thank you, Tina. I appreciate you having me here. And it sounds like it's going to be a great show tonight. Yeah, well, of course it's going to be a great show. You're on our show tonight, and I cannot wait to learn all about this stuff that you have to offer for us tonight. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, Yeah, so uh, basically I'm actually a master electrician in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Um, We started uh, quite some long time ago. I don't want to give away my age, but uh, I guess fresh out of high school, I went to trade school and uh, became an electrician, worked with my dad, who was also an electrician, and and got involved in the community, um, helping anyone from A to Z that needed some assistance. Uh, I branched out a little bit from there, doing some burglar alarm system, uh, and reverted back to the medical alert system. We found that there was a need for that type of equipment. That That's great. Um, and how long have so, you been doing next monitoring? So that's going on almost 11 years uh, with the electrical going well over 25, uh, I hate to say. Um, so it kind of fits hand in hand where uh, with the technology that's there and the equipment that's available today to help anyone from, um, like I said, uh, any type of uh, uh, situation that they need, that they would need help in, whether it would be uh, someone who might fall and need some assistance someone who might have access to a button, uh, say for situations such as the fire alarm going off, uh, signs of, uh, we've seen signs of a stroke, um, someone breaking into the home. So we find that some of this equipment that you can use with a panic button uh, benefits pretty much uh, anyone out there. So walk us through it. Walk us through for somebody like me who's in a wheelchair um, and you're coming out to my home to assess my home and what I would need. How does the whole process work? How do we get this set up and what do we need to do? So a lot of people would find us on the internet. Uh, Obviously our website, www.nextmonitoring.com. It brings you to the site that has the different equipment on there. Uh, from the basic medical or at home to the one that's on the go. So if somebody was out and about in the yard, say in the garden or had accessibility to uh, go out in that community, they can bring what they call as a mobile companion out there. Uh, that particular unit is a small device that would wear around your neck or your um, belt clip. And you would ac- access the panic button there should you need any type of assistance. So, that one works off the new GPS technology, uh, global positioning system that you can get located anywhere. So whether you are right outside your home, right down the street at the corner, uh, getting anything maybe at your mailbox, should an incident happen and you press that button, you can get access to help. How far does that work? Like, can I go anywhere with that? I mean, because I travel all over the state and everything. If I was to get something like that, could I travel everywhere? Or does it have to be somewhere in the vicinity of my house? I know. I think that's uh, fantastic, you know, especially if you get to travel in these days and times, obviously. <laughs> so we all are looking to itching to get out. Um, this particular unit works anywhere in the United States. So it works off the AT&T network. Uh, which is the most most widely used network. It's not necessarily needed to have AT&T as a service for your cell phone or anything else. It's just the service that we provide through that system uh, because the amount of tire, tire, um, I'm sorry, towers and cell towers that are out there that can provide that assistance. So we have people that, you know, basically if they can be in their home, they, whether they get on a bus, an airplane, and they travel, say, to Florida, uh, everybody loves to go to Disney World, uh, you can literally take that unit with you. So it's pretty pretty remotely where you can bring it everywhere. Now, 
how about if I had like an elderly uh, parents or whatever like that? Would I be alerted that something happened to them or how does that work? Yeah, so the whether the equipment is for someone who's at home where the home equipment works about a thousand feet and that would be uh, say your backyard, your front yard, your side yard and basement. Uh, that's more geared to uh, someone who might be more confined at home. And that works well by pressing the button, similar to the GPS one, which basically you could use at home and anywhere else. And there would be a call list. So for an example, if you did have an emergency, you could simply press that button and we would notify people on that call list. And that could be a family friend, a neighbor, um, any family member, or even a caregiver for that matter. That, that's fantastic. Is there anyone that would automatically notify the family? Yeah, so both units that we have uh, do also come with an option of a fall detector. So what the fall detector does is basically if you to move around, uh, take a stumble, and you're unable to get back up, the fall detection can stop the sequence of calling for help for you. So uh, what we usually say is there's not one particular system that's 100% foolproof, uh, but we like to say that some of the technology that we use are some of the most advanced ones around. So they go from a basic of three algorithms to one we use is 160 algorithms to detect all types of motions. So in the event that you did fall and you couldn't press that button, it would start a sequence, call for help, and that would notify your family as well. That, that's great. Now, here's a question that I get all the time, and it may be a silly question to you, but to our community, it's very important. Is How does it work for somebody that's in a wheelchair who doesn't walk? Like, how would the system know because I'm sitting down 90% of the time? Is it my body that moves that would notify that? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so there's all different types of technology. I don't know if you remember, there was one system out there where if you kind of slouched in your your chair on your couch, it would go off automatically. So there's some that are very, very sensitive. So if you were to stand or sit in the wheelchair straight up and you were to slouch or lean to the side, which is maybe not a normal act uh, for you, uh, we can uh, have that go where that would set off um, and set that fall detection off. Uh, if you fell out of the chair as well, a quick movement and a sudden stop would cause that fall detection to go off. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, types of fall detections, and we could probably suit the one that would be best fitted for that situation. What other type of equipment do they have other than the one that you wear around your neck? Yeah, so with the uh, fall detection right now, there are some companies out there that have it in the watch form. It's not 100% accurate. It's uh, still in the works of perfecting the units. So we're, we're all big believers in the ones that you wear around the neck. It does create more movement if you were to move or turn in different directions. Uh, so that would be uh, something that we would recommend with that. Now, each unit also has the button on it as well that you can press. So in the event that you didn't need the fall detection, you simply just needed some assistance, uh, which great is anyone out in that community uh, who maybe just needs uh, help from a caregiver, a neighbor, or a family friend. You could simply press that button. It would go to a call center, and that call center would direct your call. So what's great about that is it doesn't go directly to 911, and you wouldn't have to worry about you know ambulances and police department showing up. You could simply you know state your concern, and that could be you know I'm I'm stuck. I need I need a hand. Uh, I need my you to know, reach out to my neighbor. Uh, we could certainly reach out to that person and let them know. That's fantastic. Now, is any of this covered um, by Medicare or Medicaid or by any kind of insurance company or anything because it would be a safety issue? Um, is any of this covered or is it just all out of pocket and by choice? Uh, there's different levels of uh, insurance coverage. So a lot of times that we find is with the presence of a doctor's note, uh, which is usually easily can be uh, received from a doctor who, who feels that this could uh, benefit you in some way, you could basically submit that into your insurance company who would possibly cover that, or they may ask you to prepay and then return get reimbursed. 
Uh, so it depends on different qualifications, different insurances that you have. Um, some situations we work with the, uh, the home modification programs and with them is they look for something that's more of a permanent installation. So that would be, you know, such as a, you know, a ramp, a stair lift, an elevator. Uh, those are more permanent installations. Those most likely would be covered because they can't be removed easily. So with the medical alert, it's still kind of a work in progress. And with its price range being anywhere from, you know, $29 a month to $59 a month, I guess the insurance companies feel that it's a, still a small price to pay that, you know, consumers uh, would be able to take that cost on themselves. That's great. And now talking about the home modification, I know you work closely with Bill and Linda and they couldn't make it tonight due to a family emergency, but tell me a little bit about what they offer and what they have. Yeah, so uh, uh, Bill and Linda uh, own a company called Home Health Smith in Paul Smith, Rhode Island. They also have what they call the Center for Adaptive Living, um, a great facility with a bunch of equipment in there that you can go in, whether you're a caregiver, family member, uh, nurse, that you can um, you know, host events there, go in and do some training and see all the new products and technology that are there. Um, they in particular, along with uh, there's some other companies as well that we see is uh, uh, Mike Duckett from uh, Home Mobility Pros uh, is also one of them. I know did some work in the facility uh, recently. Um, so they recently updated the Center for Adaptive Living. Um, and there's basically, we have some kitchen products in there from Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath. Uh, again, Mike from uh, Mobility Pros, uh, Easy Access has installed some items there as well. Um, along with Wickford Appliance uh, donated kitchen uh, products. And me, myself, under the electrical, Raymond D. Melance Electric and Safety Co-op, we actually did some electrical work in the facility there as well. You can find anything from grab bars to ramps uh, to handrails, stair lifts, uh, and which, which is unique to them is elevators. So anyone that's known uh, Bill Bombach, uh, uh, he's the expert when it comes to elevators and installation. So they've been doing that all throughout New England for quite a long time, and they do a good job of that. Is it elevators indoors or outdoors or both? I explain the, the difference to people. Yeah, so you can literally get anything uh, outdoor, indoor. So basically inside the footprint of the building, um, uh, Bill is uh, also uh, certified through uh, CAPS uh, Aging in Place Specialist. Uh, so he's familiar with the building codes. He would work with someone to get that footprint of that elevator installed either inside the home um, through existing closet space or bedroom space, or externally, uh, which an external building could be put on the outside, uh, then get wired, all the controls put in, the elevator installed and tested properly, uh, and then all the proper permits that are required. So as a, a licensed electrician myself, I know the importance of having a professional do the job. Uh, so to me, that's why I think, you know, uh, Home Healthsmith does a good job of making sure that everything is done uh, proper and safe. That's fantastic. And I know the difference between an elevator outdoors yeah. is if you had a yard or your footage wasn't all there, that having an elevator takes away those wraparound ramps, as I call them, that could literally go around your whole house to be ADA compliant to, you know, have the right slope and everything. What would be the benefit of having an elevator in the house um, compared to um, a ramp or a stair lift? Again, exactly like you said, uh, some of the older houses uh, built depending on certain areas of town and cities, their uh, footprint for the width of, you know, a stairway, which we take for granted nowadays on a new home, are a minimum 36 inches wide. There are some that are just 30 inches wide. So in that case, you really couldn't get a stair lift in there. Um, and also exterior wise, getting a, a, a lift or ramp in that facility or home for that matter, you can imagine with the, the pitch and the size of the ramp that you would have to put in. Um, I go to a lot of other sites and I see these ramps installed, some homemade ones out of wood, uh, some makeshift ones out of metal. And there's really proper building codes as far as the, you, know, you can agree to the, the pitch and the size and how much 
uh, you know, space you need to move around in there. So I'm sure you know that's important to follow all the building codes. Um, so that's that's one thing that I that I stress that I see is get the professional, uh, such as like a home health smith, to come in and do that free evaluation. There's, there's really no cost or obligation, and get the you know correct measurements and the options to, you know to decide whether or not maybe a maybe a stair lift is good. Uh, maybe you even could provide a ceiling lift. Uh, with the elevators, we find, uh, in fact, we're working on one in um, Narragansett area, and that one was added exterior to the home. And I got to admit, when I drove up, I could not believe how beautiful it fit in the landscape of the building. So they, it was all engineered. Uh, exterior was done. The wiring is in place. Uh, the home healthsmith is getting ready to put the elevator in. And uh, I was just in amazement. In fact, my staff that was with me as well could not even believe that there was an elevator in the home. <laughs> so interesting. And that's true. They are. They are. They are so beautiful. And you know, it, it's true. I've been through a lot of that, especially building the the wheelchair accessible home we just built uh, with Habitat in in Barville that I'm currently living in. Um, you know, the ramps out front were very cautious to us. We have one that's completely 100% ADA compliant, which is out back. That goes up to my back thing and then it went to my backyard. But my front ramp is slightly a little steeper because it would have had to go across my driveway into my neighbor's yard to make it 100% fully compliant. But because I use a motorized chair and not a manual chair, it's a, a ramp that's no problem to me. So it's also in the ability of the equipment, the person, the individual uses as well. Um, do you have something? Yeah, like, that's correct. Um, I think there's uh, different situations for everyone. Yeah. Do you have something like a video where like, say I had older family members and I wanted to check in on them during the day because they want to age in place, but yet I'm very nervous because they, you know, maybe it's early dementia or something, you know, where they're not quite ready to go yet. Like a video where I could check in on them. Is that something that you guys offer? Yeah, so right now um, we're working with the, the popular Amazon Alexa products, of course, and we can provide um, not only Amazon Alexa, but the uh, are you familiar with the Echo Show, which is the uh, TV monitor, um, and that could be set up in whether it's a caregiver, a family member, or a neighbor. Uh, they could have one, and you could have one, and that's something where you could drop in and check up on those uh Throughout the day, you know, whether or not, you know, it's around lunchtime or breakfast. Um, so as simple as just getting them into your contacts uh, through the Amazon Alexa app and setting that up. And what we're finding is being the electrician also helps by installing the uh, activated wall switches. So through the uh, Amazon Alexa, you could simply state, you know, turn on the dining room light and we have lights. <laughs> So you can imagine being able to see who's at your door, uh, speak to someone, which is, a, you said, your neighbor or could be a family member in another state for that matter. Um, uh, my sister, as a matter of fact, lives in Florida and she has one. And we basically every now and then would, would talk to each other. We still forget that that's still available. We're so used to either picking up the cell phone or, or texting, you know, knowing now that, you know, if I wanted to check on her, uh, her um, husband's, uh, um, my brother-in-law has been ill. So, you know, we want to check on him. So I'm able to check in, see a picture of him, talk to him in person as if I'm really there. So it's pretty exciting technology. That That's amazing. And, you know, you could give some lability li and realistic stuff to what I'm going to talk about next because people don't understand of things that are want or a frivolous thing or something that's an absolute need. Like, even like you said, knowing who's at your doorbell, you know, like me in a wheelchair, if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm outside of my wheelchair and somebody rings my front door, I would like to know before I try to transfer into my wheelchair, get up and get moving, if it's somebody I actually want to go to the door for to see. Um, so having something like that isn't a want, it's kind of a need. It's a safety feature or, Having a, a generator, like an automatic generator, because I know 
I know we're looking for a generator myself, but you know, people don't understand. They're like, why don't you just get one of those kickstart ones? I'm like, that's great. How am I supposed to wheel it out, plug it in, fill it with gas and everything every four hours in my wheelchair? If you could explain a little bit of that from, you know, uh, uh, an electrician's point of view. Right. And that's an excellent point. And uh, that's why I always stress uh, when we do a lot of the shows, the Rhode Island Home Show, for example, uh, Home Health Smelt is there as well, and they get their products. What I find is a lot of people would come in all out of breath, all worried. What do I do? What do I turn? And they're like, I want you know a generator. I want an, an elevator. I want this. And they really don't understand how that all comes into play. Uh, and we remind them that there's professionals out there that you know that we know that can help offer that free assessment and go over those different options and what's nice about our network of people is the true caring individuals who really want the in the best interest uh, of someone who who is in need and who can use these services so we 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 work with them in particular and knowing that you know anyone can go in and and sell you a generator me being an electrician um, also owning next monitoring alert systems, working with, uh, you know, uh, different multiple disabilities, the elderly, uh, children, uh, anything from A to Z, um, in, in different organizations that I'm, I'm involved in. That's something that, you know, we, we take serious and we want to make sure that people have all that information. So you're not going to have a salesman come in and say, yeah, you know, here's this generator work, you know, here's a button you can press. Great. And then they leave and then you go, wait a minute, how am I, again, how am I going to fill this with gas when the gas runs out? So these are the decisions that, you know, you need to know and be fully aware of. Um, and, and you know your situation. So having a professional that can come in and talk to you about your situation and your needs and wants of what's going to help you. Um, and then we can then, um, you know, talk about all the different other options because again, there's a big difference from having to go out every four to five hours and put gas in a generator to just be, you know, sitting, sitting there, you know, maybe you're watching the news, the power goes out. And again, it is a concern in the middle of winter. It's maybe it's late at night. It's pitch dark. You're going to lose, you're going to have no light. You're going to have um, obviously no heat. And where are you going to see or where are you going to go? It's a scary situation. I can tell you. It, it truly is. And like I said, so, I moved out to Snowmageddon part of Rhode Island. Um, every day it's snowing like three to five inches. Um, we are probably somewhere around two feet at my house right now. But, you know, when I first started mentioning wow. that I needed a generator for my house, you know, so many people are like, oh, I have a small one you can borrow. Or I have this that you can borrow. What they don't understand is I'm very thankful that they're all coming out of the woodwork. But if the generator doesn't work for me, I'd rather them offer it to somebody else that it could work for than to, you know, take it to be gracious, but it not work for me. You know, like, I don't know how many people will say to me, oh, make sure you have your cell phone, a flashlight and everything when you go to bed in case you lose power. Well, that's great. If my chair doesn't charge, I can't leave my bed. My cell phone doesn't charge. I can't call anybody. And what's the flashlight going to do for me? I can make uh, shadow puppets on the ceiling is about as far as I can get it. You know, <laughs> it's just funny that people yeah. don't, if they're not in the situation or they don't have somebody in the situation. I mean, to me, the electric company will only come out if you're on life saving um apparatus like if i'm on a ventilator to keep me breathing yes they will come out in emergency to hook me up faster but they don't feel that it's an emergency for me to get to the bathroom or me to get to my kitchen or to the rest of the house or my other medical equipment that i may need um talk a little bit about that about how it's not a want it's an actual need to some people Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't think there's any ill intentions by some people, you know, they, they want to be helpful and we totally understand that because we do have people that want to offer stuff or give stuff uh, in, in, in certain aspects to help situations, but you know, sometimes they're just not fully aware. And like I said, there's no one best uh, to know about your situation except for you. I mean, you know, what's best for you. Uh, we can only make some assumptions, uh, offer some suggestions 
And at that point, um, you know, it's up to you uh, what your wants, desires, your limitations of what you can work with to decide. Um, but knowing on me with the electrical side and how important that is, and I've seen the difference in people's lives who, you know, uh, say, for example, we, we did work with someone who had uh, a severe MS uh, and it was difficult for them. They, they were in a chair most of the time, could not move around. And we've in installed some different lighting for them. Uh, they went and put a generator in. And you realize, wow, this really is making a difference. You know, it's great. You know, generator is everybody would want one. But when you actually sit down and say, wow, this is really making a huge difference in this person's life. And it's not just, you know, great. This is, a, you know, I can watch TV. I can make coffee. We take for granted. Uh, those situations that we can do that, you know, and, and, and you probably would agree. I'm looking at it. Like I want your smoke alarms to work. I want your lights to come on. I want your heat to come on in the middle of the winter. And, and you know, I want your, your chair to charge, you know, these are things that to me are the priorities that you need taken care of. I, I truly believe and I agree with you that people don't do it maliciously. They have the best of intentions. I just like, I don't know how many people have said to me, Oh, if the power goes out, why don't you just use a manual chair? That's not as easy as it sounds. You're in a power chair for a reason. You need that power chair for a, a reason that just switching to a manual chair, people don't realize how difficult that actually is um, or to maneuver that chair. Um, but I want you to go over the websites a little bit um, with us. So let's let's talk about Next Monitoring first. What is the website for Next Monitoring? Because we're going to show it. We're going to kind of like scroll around it a little bit so people know how to use it. Yeah. So uh, we, for some reason, I like the name Next. I don't know. Everybody asked where I got it from. Uh, but it's just something that came to me back when we stuck with uh, Next Monitoring. So it's www.nextmonitoring.com, so N-E-X-T. And uh, we added the word alert systems because basically we can alert for any type of uh, equipment or system out there. Uh, monitoring at one point, believe it or not, I'm going to drop that name. Uh, but we find that today's day and age with the telehealth and the different equipment that's out there, monitoring is becoming bigger and bigger, whether it's uh, monitoring uh, monitoring whether or not a generator came on or went off, the power went off or on. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we can monitor uh, in that aspect. And there's a lot of technology that's out there as well. So along with just the home medical alert, the old saying, I fall in and I can't get up, pressing the button. Most people would say, I'll never fall. And in some situations, some people won't fall because maybe they're in a certain situation. Um but we look at it as a, it's a button that you can press for anything that makes you feel unsafe. So whatever type of situation that you're in, young or old, uh, in the home, or outside the home, we look at it as what if your smoke alarm went off and there's a fire in the home? You want to be able to press the button. If, say, God forbid, you were getting chest pains, you want to be able to press that button. And we go through some of these scenarios we had one story where we had somebody work for us for about six months. And she started saying, you know what would be good to have that button for? And I said, what? She said, choking. And then she started to cry. And then I said, is everything okay? She actually said her father passed away of choking. And if he had one of the buttons, that could have wow. saved his life. Um, so it's, it's a it's tough so situation true. to you hear. You never know when something's going to happen. And then here I am, the owner of the business, and I think of all these scenarios, and I said, boy, you know, for some reason that didn't cross my mind. And she said, it could happen to anyone, you know, anywhere, anytime. Right. Uh, he was choking on some food, didn't get access to be able to call 911 in time, and, you know, she was devastated, uh, changed her life. And she wanted to help come work for us to be able to spread that word and show how this particular system, like I said, again, whether you're outside, inside, and you know, any situation, um, all these different scenarios, the signs of a stroke. Uh, we even had somebody that got broken into in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning. They tell us the story that they hit their butt and it costs, it says emergency calling for help and it scared the uh, intruders away. So another scenario that, you know, someone who's, you know, 
your situation could be at home. Maybe you're alone that day, someone breaking into the home. You can get access to press that button. Yeah, it's so true. And, you know, you should also, like I said, I have a sticker on my window of what bedroom is mine, because if there's a fire or if someone's intruding, people need to help to get me out because I have to get into my wheelchair in order to get out. If that hallway is blocked or, you know, my entrance or exit is blocked, people need to know where to come and find me and how to get me out. Um, let's go over the other website really quickly. Can you give us the um, home uh, website? Yeah, so that one there's uh, www.homehealthsmith.com. And they're located right in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. So if you to Google, Google them, uh, you know, it's uh, mobile, mobility plus safety equals freedom. Um, they carry anything there from A to Z, from uh, elevators. to you can even get dumb waiters, vertical platform lifts, wheelchair ramps, ceiling lifts, portable showers. Uh, grab bars, anything, uh, home modifications. Uh, of course, the elevators are uh, a big uh, a big thing. And what's nice about their services is they do offer rentals. So I find that to be a very unique situation that, you know, maybe you're temporarily moving from one place to another. Um, you could actually take a rental for three months or six months. And they make it very easy and affordable so that you can take that rental and turn it into something permanent should your situation change. So um, I think being able to have that expertise, I mean, I got to say, you know, uh, Bill and Linda, I mean, the knowledge behind them, 40, 40 years uh, with, with Bill in the elevator business um, and all his credentials, they can do anything from A to Z. And uh, having that expert that can come to your home. And, and I stress that all the time because a lot of people – and, and probably just like me in my situation when my parents uh, unfortunately had passed, but when they were alive, I was trying to come up with ways to help their situation. And I tried so hard myself to make those uh, changes and, and didn't realize I got a whole host of experts over here that can help me. So uh, rely on those experts uh, such as Bill and Linda from Home Health Smith uh, to provide those different services. And they have a great group uh, of resources that they provide. So such as, uh, the people that and did some installations in the Center for Adaptive Living uh, between the, um, the Rhode Island, um, the Wickford Appliance in Rhode Island, as well as Mike Duckett from Mobility Pros, Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath. Uh, they've all donated some time uh, along with our electrical business uh, into the facility. And what we, we like about that most, it's the education piece where you can come in and you can get educated on all the different types of equipment that's there. You get to touch the equipment, feel the equipment, use it, uh, see what's available, see what's available in the new technology. And with the center getting remodeled, it's getting ready to reopen. Um, there's a lot of events that happen there. Uh, so you, you get to, you get to kind of get a firsthand look of what's new and what's coming, keeping, you know, you safe uh, pretty much for anything mobility wise. I think that's great. And one thing I want to, I know you're a big advocate for, and I want to make sure that we mention that today is using an expert. Like I would never have my brother's friend's uncle, oh, who could do electrical, install my generator. I want an electrician who I know I can count on, who has that license behind him to do the work correctly and properly. Talk a little bit about how important it is to use the people with the absolute knowledge than a friend to save a little bit of money because in the long run, you may not be saving so much money. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, what's important also to know is the strict rules, uh, whether it's, you know, Rhode Island or Massachusetts, a lot of them require you to be licensed in that state, uh, whether it be for construction supervisor, construction license, uh, like I said, Bill is a, a certified agent in place specialist. So you have certification dedicated to certain uh, areas. Um, that's important just to have somebody who's just what they call as a handyman um, because it does show, it does come through. And with the handyman, he might be a little cheaper, but when you work with a professional such as like a home health smith or a next monitoring alert systems, 
you're going to get someone who's going to be familiar with what might be available, whether it is, you know, uh, a discount program, maybe there's some funding available through uh, different uh, veterans uh, programs, um, Medicaid, Medicare. Uh, so they're going to know all the ins and outs, especially like the home modification loan programs that you can utilize. So you want to you want to take advantage of those services uh, as well. So that that's important. And I got to say, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to have met uh, everyone, you know, throughout my, you know, I'm not, I, uh, I think I'm old, but people might say I'm not that old. But um, the people that I've met who are professionals, who have, uh, we can count on. So you know that they're going to do the right thing uh, for anyone who, who is in need. So working with, uh, you know, Home Health Smith uh, personally, um, also you're familiar with uh, Deb Burton of uh, RI Elder Info, a phenomenal person who you can count on for just about anything. Um, I'm also actually president of Elder Resources of Rhode Island. And, um, you know, we have a host of professionals uh, from A to Z to help uh, anyone for any situation. So uh, you would agree that having that professional get it, you know, do it once, do it right, uh, is probably the way to go. Well, like I said, especially when I'm bound to my, uh, mm -hmm. I don't like to say bound to my wheelchair, but using my motorized wheelchair, I want to make sure that the equipment that I have is safe and it's going to work the way it's going to work. And I have somebody to hold accountable. I have that license behind them to hold them accountable for doing the right thing. You know, when you hire a friend of a friend of a friend or a brother or who's somebody who dabbles in it, you don't have anybody to hold accountable in the long run. I think a professional is going to do the right job because they can be held accountable in the long run. Do you find that true? Yeah, I totally agree. It's a, you know, a different type of world these days where I think everybody, you know, we're all feeling the pinch a little bit. We all want to save a few pennies. Uh, you know, in the long run, when you actually look at it, you know, there's things that I've done, Having, you know, little things, oh, I can do this myself and I can do that myself. And you realize, you know, having that professional that's there uh, to get something done and know that you can be rest assured, you know, especially when it comes to, well, I, in fact, for example, last week I was in installing a medical alert system and, you know, being an electrician, you know, any medical alert installer might just come in, he's a salesman, plug and play and leave and get his money you know, as professionals, we know we have an obligation. We, we uphold our licenses. And when I looked around and I noticed, and I said, you know, I don't notice a smoke alarm up on that ceiling. They admitted they recently had the ceiling done and the painter took the smoke alarm down and never put it back up. Um, so I said, would you mind if I take another look? And I found out that even the basement didn't have a smoke alarm. So they were living there oh, wow. for quite some time with no smoke alarm in the basement or carbon monoxide detector for that matter. Uh, and then the one in the ceiling was probably several months that wasn't put up. So I was able to, um, you know, help donate some of my time to install those. Um, and, and that's where it comes in to play. That's, uh, you know, doing the right thing and having the professional, he's going to see things that most other people won't. And that's another thing I want to touch on. I'm glad you had brought it up. I know your organization and your businesses, as much as you do the professional work, you do a lot of charity and you do a lot of giving back. Tell us a little bit about that and boast your bubble a little bit because I'm so proud of what you do. Thanks. Yeah, I don't, uh, sometimes I go back and I start looking at all the different things that we've done. We have, uh, you know, a little binder with that information. And I said, boy, I forgot I did this and I forgot I did that. It's something that, you know, I, cause I joke and say it's my parents fault because they instilled uh, good values in me. So, <laughs> um, my father was a police officer, so he's very strict. Um, and that was important to him to help out anyone in the community, you know, whether they were elderly, had a disability or had some need that they, uh, needed to take care of we would go to those houses and help out. So he instilled in me that that was important to do because people would always ask, you know, what, what got you started in next monitoring? And that's basically how it came to be that we felt that there was a need in, in the area for people who just, you know, whether, you know, they were homebound, maybe they were in a wheelchair, couldn't, you know, reach a light bulb to change a light bulb or even to change a battery and a smoke alarm. Those are the things we take for granted all the time. 
and it makes you as a person realize, boy, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. I can climb a ladder. I can change this bulb. I can you know, change this battery. I, and I'm doing something good for them in the community and I'm keeping them safe. Um, so that's definitely, you know, really important to us. And I think going forward with any, any professional would feel the same way. And I know you do, you, you donate to a lot of organizations. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So we, we started out with the uh, Alzheimer's association uh, we've worked a little bit with that. We did have some uh, friends and we also had some uh, clients as well that were going through those issues. So I volunteered pretty hundreds of hours with the Alzheimer's Association, um, donating time working with the, the men in the group to go through their issues, um, along with uh, different caregiver options uh, for different organizations. We did a little bit of that. We actually did... Um, a fundraiser comedy show and we raised about uh eight thousand dollars for caregiver services we, we thought we'd be a couple of thousand and we just filled the place right up so um that was uh pretty unique the the gentleman was um they referred to him as the, the portuguese fireman so he was a, a popular uh person in the far over area and uh I'll, I'll never forget that seeing all those people and they were telling us we we're way close to capacity and we didn't think we were going to fill the place up and they gave me the microphone and you know of course i'm calling him please come down you're ready to for the show and he was stuck with so many people he couldn't get through um and of course i'm i the only best i can say is i'm, I'm i was the french electrician that's the only thing i could tell them uh, i couldn't tell any jokes at the time um, but lo and behold, we were surprised for some caregiver services to raise uh, 8000 for that. We did a, a skydive event as well. It, it turned out to be a, a silly joke with another gentleman to say, hey, let's jump, jump out of an airplane. And he said, you know what? What if we do it for charity? And I said, yeah, let's do it for some donations. And we raised about $2,800 uh, uh, for that as well. Um then another event that we actually had a lot of fun with was uh, we had a veteran uh, that was in need. Um, he was in a wheelchair, had some uh, um, hopes and dreams to kind of get out a little bit. So we surprised him and we made it work. So he would do a hot air balloon ride. So we, we kind of got this person all set up and the hot air balloon ride. Um, probably, probably went for about an hour ride, just hitting the treetops. So um, a lot of different fun, exciting events, I guess you could say. So in, I got to say, you know, I do got to have to give kudos to a lot of my professional friends who, you know, pushed me to do this and to help along the way. And we, we probably generated well over $10,000. A lot of people don't, don't look at that as much. I think maybe today and we're hoping that they do because, um, you know, there are a lot of electricians out there. There's a lot of, uh, people who do home modifications or all the alert systems. But when you can work with a professional who's willing to take a little bit of that back and give back in the community, I think that's really important uh, and says a lot about, you know, I'm going to be there for the right thing. And that's, that's important to me. Um, besides uh, a lot of our staff as well, donating countless hours um, to the community um, materials such as, you know, Hopefully some time of some generator. We're still kind of working on a generator donation there, right? That would be awesome. <laughs> we we, we uh, got a couple we of fun uh, things going on in the spring, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> but it, it's just so important. I think you can and do I, it. I really it. think. Uh, yeah. Yep. But I just think it's so important because okay. I would rather hire the company that's giving back to the community and not just there to make the, the almighty buck. We know it's important to make money and we know it's important to, you know, earn a living and stuff like, but when you have the heart to give back and to give some of that back, I just think it just makes your company that much more special because I'd rather donate or hire a company that I know does so much good for so many others and I'd rather give them my money than somebody who's just out for the almighty buck and doesn't care about anybody. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're nearing the end. And I want you to tell everybody 
what is the most important thing that you want people to take from this podcast today? What is the most important thing you want people to do or know? I would say it's important to reach out to the local professional. So whether it's, you know, home health Smith or our next monitoring alert systems or the ones I described helping out in the uh, center for adaptive living, there's a whole group of people there willing to help give you some free resources, uh, some information and whether it's a free estimate uh, or some advice, uh, don't be afraid to reach out. I think, you know, that's the thing. People are always looking for other ways, thinking they can pinch pennies or, you know, I got a brother's cousin who can help out. Reach out to that professional because believe it or not, that professional is working hard for you. And they're out there in the community. Uh, the ones I work with, I mean, they're always out donating, volunteering and giving back. So the more we can get to us to get to you, the more we can give back. And I think it's just a, a, a nice circle that we can work around and and, and help one another in the community. It's important. Yeah, I, I think, like I said, I think what you do is uh, amazing. I am so glad that we ended up connecting. I think we connected over Facebook is how we connected when I started building my house and talking about the generator. Um, and you were just so helpful right from the get-go of telling me what I need and what I wanted and, you know, helping me so, so much that I really believe in what you do, and I really hope people reach out. Um, I also want to tell everybody that it's also a good thing to have when you do use your next monitoring and the EMS comes that you have your red bag. Your red bag carries all of your medical information on you at all times, and it's non-tech based. So the EMTs or the EMS that comes out to help you will have all of your information in this little bag so they know how to take care of you. Just go to www.rampasinclusion.com and grab yours today. I just noticed today I was actually talking to the founder of the coalition, Talk Radio Today, and we have sold over 8,000 bags just from our 20 um, programs that we have done so far. So we hope those numbers keep rising because I know we have over 50,000 red bags across the country right now because we send them out. This is a national initiative, not just a Rhode Island initiative. Um, so we're going to get some of those bags out to you so you can give them to some of your clients as well when you're out and about in the community. But uh, give us your website again, that's just fantastic. so everybody knows how to contact you. Yeah, that's uh, www.nextmonitoring.com. And the other one for Home Health Smith? And that's www.homehealthsmith.com. That's fantastic. I want to thank you so much for being a guest on my show tonight because I think what you offer is so important for so many. So we will definitely be sharing this out all over the place um, tonight. But thank you. And look forward to our fundraisers this spring for the generator for my wheelchair accessible home that we will be working on this summer that Raymond has offered to do the electrical work for when we do gather the, um, the generator. So watch for that. And please make sure you reach out to Raymond and to Linda and to Bob and to make sure that all of your needs are being taken care of. Uh, thank you so much, Raymond. I really look forward to working with you and talking with you and having you become a part of RAMP and a part of our committee and possibly board down the road because I would really truly believe you would be an asset to us. Yeah, thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it, Tina, and keep up the great work. Oh, thank you so much. And I just want to let everybody know, make sure you tune in next Wednesday when we will be talking to Erin from Iz the Izzy Foundation. Um, we will be highlighting everything about the Izzy Foundation and the Izzy Room at Hasbro Hospital. So turn it, tune in next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. because we have great guests great organizations, and we just want to get the resources out there so that you are taken care of. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you next week. Have a great night.